G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go, back with the new season of FIA, another exhibition series that is going to be running until early next year, so this is actually the 2020 to 2021 exhibition series, we're in manufacturer series and I've gone back to Toyota uh, after the McLaren season last time out, it was fairly horrific that season, uh, I've gone back to a car that I enjoy, a car with better top end and it's a little bit more manageable. We find ourselves in a uh, second split, I believe this is, for this round here, this race here, uh, at Autodromo, or Autodromo Nazionale Monza. Uh, no chicane. Make sure I get that pronunciation right so I don't trigger any Italians. Uh, they definitely do not want to do that. Uh, but we come out for our qualifying session here. You can see it's the no chicane variant of Monza this time. So just keep an eye on this qualifying lap here as we begin to find ourselves a bit of a slipstream for the start or first portion of the lap. Uh, slipstream off the back of the Porsche driven by PAL 97 here. Uh, you can see we're pretty much prime distance to get about the best uh, amount of slipstream we can as we head up this massive straight now, uh, 1.2 kilometers long now that we avoid and completely drive past this first chicane here, the Porsche actually moves out of my way, so that tells me he purposely gave me slipstream, so thank you very much for that, uh, much appreciated, and we'll have a look to see how the rest of this lap goes. So the first chicane is now the second chicane, uh, the uh, Varianti della Roggia is now the first chicane, although I'm probably still going to call it the second chicane by accident, because that's what I best know it as. Uh, the rest of the circuit from here on in is exactly the same as the other variant of Monza. Uh, literally, you just skip the first chicane and then that's it. The rest of the track's the same. A good lap around here is uh, in the 138s, 137s if you're a bit alien. Uh, but generally, if you're going into the sort of mid to low 138s, you're doing pretty well for yourself. Uh, so that's what we're going to aim for for qualifying here. Uh, you can probably tell I've had a little bit of a break from this. It hasn't been a new video for like over two weeks. Uh, I don't know. I just haven't felt very motivated. You definitely need to take a break, even from things you love. If you do it too much, it does begin to grow old. Uh, and, you know, I think it's good to have a bit of a break and just refresh. Uh, refresh yourself, gear yourself back in for another good... A uh, couple of weeks, couple of months of solid play again, and I think I'm back into that. But uh, for those who don't know, I don't really have a set schedule for this. I just make them as I do, and I happen to jump in and have a good couple of races here for this round here. And therefore, it's made itself into a video. I tend to be more motivated to make a video if I do well in um in the race. So you can see for our first lap, we set a 138.6. You have enough time for a second lap, but I unfortunately went way too deep into the first chicane, or the second chicane, which is the first chicane now, and binned off that lap there. Uh, just say that I'm a beginner to my fellow R4M member uh, right there, R4M Jack, who actually pipped me for pole position there. So you can see uh, 138.606 was the pole time, and I had about half a tenth. Uh, more of, of worth of lap time there put me in second position So this race here 15 laps in group 3 of course the Toyota GR Supra concept uh, Beautiful machine here of uh, quite good in a straight line So it's quite well suited for this track here uh, But you can see that slipstream pay, uh, plays a major role in this race here as we come up behind the Volkswagen that Jack is driving there you can see we nearly go off and almost bin it. My goodness, that was close. Oh, <laughs> I absolutely, uh, I, I had to change my pants after that moment there. Uh, I, it, that was, oh, oh man. So on the first lap, of course, your tyres are cold. So I was just understeering a bit more than usual and that corner is already very much on edge. So cold tyres, I was just understeering off and realised at the precise moment, if I if I realised half a second later, I would have been off and that would have been my race over before it even got started. But I managed to just catch that, going at pretty much the top speed of this car around the corner that's fully loaded and I it would have been so easy to over or under correct there, but we managed to get that perfect. So we're just going to calm it down a bit, just get into the slipstream with the Volkswagen up ahead, Volkswagen GTI. Uh, that's your Group 3 alternative to the Beetle, which is the more popular choice, but that GTI is a strong car in its 
uh, in certain applications. Not too bad around Monza, I suppose. He did get it on pole position, uh, so it could be a lot worse for him, I guess. We do manage to get around the outside of Parabolica, but that does leave Jack in my slipstream as we head up the main straight now. So 15 laps here, of course. Uh, it's a no-stop race, easy no-stop. You can see Jack goes through there. So yeah, easy no-stop, one times fuel. So pretty much uh, it's negligible. And tyre wear, you do get a little bit more understeer by lap 15, but it's not like crazy. I mean, you'll see the tyre wear. We've done one lap and there's not even any red in the tyre wear indicators at all. Coming into the second chicane, I actually make a bit of a mistake and go for this move down the inside. And then we just make contact with Jack there, that's not good, seeing as we're part of the same team. Get myself a one second penalty, completely deserved that one. Uh, apologies for the contact, Jack. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I have to cross the penalty line and serve that one second penalty there, and lose two positions uh, down behind the Chevrolet Corvette, driven by TBR. We drop out of the slipstream of that top two there, so that's more punishment, more consequences of my mistake. And I get overtaken by the Hyundai Genesis, driven by Captain Muffin. Here, let's hope we don't make the same mistake there. And we just have to lift off the throttle as we were understeering. We're just slightly offline there. And then coming into the second chicane. Braking nice and early. Keep it behind the Hyundai, uh, driven by Captain Muffin. Go through the second chicane. And yes, a one second penalty for exceeding track limits. I uh, don't really have an excuse for that. Tire wear is fairly good. I guess the only excuse is that I couldn't really see the corner. Uh, the back of that Hyundai is quite uh, bulky. Uh, but you can see this race is going downhill quite quickly. Come past Simonized, heading up the next straight of the following lap up the inside at Curva Grande, which is now turn one. And then we go past Jack, who had unfortunately picked himself up a penalty. And coming up the main straight now, we get re-overtaken by Simonized. That Corvette is actually very good in a straight line, even slightly better than the Supra here. Uh, so uh, that's to be expected. Looking up the uh, outside, it will be for the second chicane on the brakes. We're going to run side by side through the chicane. Not really ideal. Get through there nicely. A little bit of contact on the exit, but it was just about okay. But according to the game's penalty system, no, that was a three second penalty, mate. You absolute dirty driver. We're going to have to serve that on this lap now. So this race is going extremely, extremely quickly downhill. We're down into seventh at this point after qualifying in second. Uh, and as we come through here, somebody quits. That was actually Jack who quit. He obviously binned it on the exit of Lesmo 2. And then coming up the uh, straight of the following lap, lap seven up the inside of the BMW, but the gap in, up the inside of the Corvette just closes up there. We're not able to get our way past until the next lap where we just pick up Slipstream side by side through here. Uh, the Supra, very good if when it pulls out of the Slipstream. A lot of cars can just kind of run out of steam and stop accelerating, uh, but the Supra is quite good. There are a couple of consistent laps there where I was trying to catch up, but then unfortunately the second chicane, way too much weight transfer, overcorrect, and I binned it into the gravel. Lost two positions, and then I further spin out, trying to get onto the power. Absolutely hemorrhaging time here. Try to get on the power again, almost spin out, down into ninth at this point. Finally get going. One car up the inside at Lesmo 1, and a second car on my inside there. I've got really dirty tyres, and I spin out for a third time. I've lost about 12 seconds at this point. I'm down in 11th on the exit of Lesmo 2, gently on the power. And we finally equalised in 11th. There's really no point showing the rest of that race because I was stuck in 11th the entire time. What an absolute disaster. Literally, couldn't have gone much worse. Um, I've just <laughs> made too many mistakes, a couple of poor choices in terms of accidental moves. Uh, but that does mean we get to go again. We picked up 148 points in that last race there, uh, which is about... 50 points shy of what I consider to be a good result. Anything over 200, I feel for me, is a pretty good result. So that's worth going again. I think this is top split now. This is the second slot. Um, as you can see, you got Metal Gear in ninth. That's generally a pretty good indicator that you're in top split. Um, you can see there's not the level of competition in this exhibition series here is nowhere near as, as big as it is for the official season. Uh, but we're going out for our qualifying session we're going to aim at a better lap. I'm going to take you through a bit of a lap guide here, uh, as we haven't really discussed what I'm using for braking. 
You can see we get a bit of a slipstream off the back of the Beetle at the start of the lap. That car's not so great in a straight line, uh, so the Supra very easily outhauls it. So for turn one, Curva Grande, you can do it flat out when you get your line right. Looking on the left-hand side, 50 metre board turning in. Try and meet this curb on the inside that just pulls the car around and helps keep its minimum apex speed up. And coming into the uh, first chicane, braking just before the 150 metre board, and then you can cut this first bit quite a lot, second bit quite a lot as well, and you get through there nicely. Uh, third gear for the Supra, and then coming into Lesmo 1, braking just on the shadow after the 50 metre board, and accelerating just as that kind of side road meets the apex of the track. Lesmo 2, just before the 50 metre board, half the car on the kerb, and then gently on the power, and the car kind of swivels, I think is the best word, it swivels off that curb beautifully and gets a nice good slingshot down the Seraglio straight which we are now on. Ascari is the next braking point here, looking on the on the right hand side, same braking point as always, a little access road. Going onto the circuit after the 150 meter board, feather the throttle through turn 9, leap over turn 10, actually that's wrong because we missed the first chicane, that's turn 7 and 8 now. The track only consists of 9 turns in this layout. Uh, but we get through there nicely. Fourth gear I chose through Ascari. Third you can choose as well. Braking just on the 100 metre board. There's boards on the left and the right. Trailing it onto the inside. And then getting onto the power just as you see. Once again the access road meeting the apex of Parabolica. And then as we come through the exit of Parabolica. Uh, and take a nice short distance to the line. A 138.5 marginally quicker than my qualifying time in the previous slot. And it puts us in third. Quite a good qualifying time, I'm happy with that, actually. Uh, just rid one and twitchy overhauling, but as always, let's in finally enjoy the beautiful introduction. Lovely as always, meet ourselves on the grid, you can see a Jaguar F-Type on pole position, that car is quite good in a straight line, that's to be expected, that Subaru is pretty crap in a straight line, so he obviously picked up a nice good toe to get this far up the grid. We actually get a poor launch off the start, a little bit too much wheel spin in first gear as we kind of just got going there, it was a rolling start, so we don't quite have the launch. Uh, that a standing start has, but uh, we still broke into way too much wheel spin. Got Metal Gear driving the Lamborghini Huracan uh, up the inside, but he sensibly pulls out as we're coming through the Curva Grande, uh, which is quite on edge on this first lap. You can see we're just under steer off again, and we have to feather that throttle. Someone's off in the back. Coming into the second chicane, let's not make the mistake of accidentally going for a move here. You just end up losing so much time. So we're going to come nice and sensibly through here. Look on the radar, Metal Gear pulls to the inside and just makes contact with the back of me and gets myself a one second penalty. And then coming into Lesmo 1, he absolutely lobs it up the inside there. And I lost... How, how much time would I have lost there? Maybe half a tenth? Uh, half a second, sorry? So... I don't know how I feel about that move. I'm already serving a penalty. If he was just slightly more patient, uh, he probably, he definitely would have got that move done with minimal time loss. But unfortunately, he decided to take matters into his own hands, it appears. Uh, if you'd like to go back and have a look, just have a look down on the radar and have a look at sort of the, his car body language. It kind of jinks left as he is coming onto the apex of Lesmo 1. Uh, I feel as though that was a little bit of a deliberate attempt at a little bit of a you know, a return move, but he went into the back of me, you know, there were cars in front of me, I had nowhere to go, so, I, I don't know, a bit dodgy, I have heard a couple of, you know, there's a little bit of toxicity in that sort of top split player band, like at the, you know, the front, you know, the front portion of the field of top split, like consisting of those VL VLX GTR, Metal Gear, uh, those those sort of players, Dylan Lindgren, there's a little bit of toxicity there, I feel. I've heard some stories that there's, you know, there's some dirty driving happening. And I think, unfortunately, that Metal Gear, even though he hasn't got those competitors with him, 
I think maybe he's falling into those old habits, maybe racing a little bit more strongly than what would be considered acceptable. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that was quite deliberate. But we'll move on. We've fallen down into eighth position, which obviously is not ideal. Uh, but I know I'm faster than these sort of this big group up ahead, uh, you know, showing in my qualifying time. I only got to slipstream for the first portion of my qualifying lap, so most of my lap was down to my own skill. The super good in a straight line, which helps around this track. I would hate to be driving something like the Alfa Romeo, uh, which is, you know, literally a snail could beat at 0 to 60 time. Uh, but <laughs> we'll focus back on the race now. As long as we can kind of stay in slipstream and kind of not fall back and get penalties, we'll probably be okay in terms of climbing up the field here. You can see as we're heading through Ascari, we're just in the slipstream with the Hyundai, dri now driven by Ikatosh, a uh, different, different Hyundai driver in this second slot here. And we've got the Porsche driven by Maka behind. Uh, we've still got the slipstream of Ikatosh, so Maka is probably going to have trouble trying to crawl up to the back of me, even with the slipstream there. Uh, so that's going to be good for us at trying to keep this position. You can see as we head through uh, the exit of Parabolica, the Porsche is a lot closer to me than I am to the Hyundai up ahead, and the Hyundai is very, very close you know, within the slipstream of Conzio. Uh, so uh, I believe that that Porsche is going to be picking up a stronger toe than me, uh, but you can see Ikatosh pulls out, goes for the move, I'm now picking up the slipstream off the back of Conzio uh, as we head through Curva Grande, uh, and you can see the Porsche's only caught up behind about one-tenth, and we've caught up probably about three-tenths to this pair up ahead, coming into the second chicane, onto the brakes nicely, cut that chicane beautifully, leap over that second curb, onto the bow nicely, ticking all the boxes here, uh, the second chicane Got it down pat there, and we're now firmly in the slipstream of Conzio here. So the Hyundai, also quite poor in a straight line. Uh, so the Supra, uh, compared to this Hyundai, is going to be quite good, especially when it you know, has slipstream and pulls out. So as I discussed before, a lot of these cars around me, you know, they're good in slipstream, obviously, but then when they pull out to go for the move, they run out of steam and start to lose that acceleration, uh, and the Hyundai and Porsche are no different to that. You can see quite a bit of an early break coming into Ascari, but Jack had another penalty, unfortunately, uh, and you know I guess it's not really his fault. We get through there, no worries, no penalties to report of, and we are in the slipstream of this GTI. I think the GTI is fairly respectable in a straight line, so it's going to be good for our slipstream up this main straight here as we head through Parabolica. Try not to get too much understeer now that we're in dirty air. But we get through there nicely, actually, and we're a lot closer to Jack than Macca is to us. So we're going to be picking up a nice, strong slipstream tow up this main straight here. And we'll see how that translates and see how that goes through Curva Grande of Turn 1. And we'll have a look. You can see we're closing, closing in. Jack just defends to the inside. Nice and slow, no abrupt, nice predictable movement by Jack there. We're going to have a look around the outside of Curva Grande here. We just have enough grip and managed to get that car to stick around the outside. We're back into the slipstream with a pair of Hyundais up ahead, the South Korean duo, and we get through that first chicane nicely. Uh, Ikatosh does not. We just run into the back of Ikatosh there, and that is quite concerning in terms of penalty risk. Uh, we know what the penalty system is like at the moment. Penalising contact that hardly means anything at all, if it does at all. <laughs> But we managed to get through there okay. A little bit of a poor run through Lesmo 1. Look behind, Jack's gone. He's out of my slipstream. That's opened up the gap behind. So that is good. That means we can kind of focus only on the cars ahead. We don't have to worry so much about a, a rearward assault. Uh, <laughs> you never really want to worry about that no matter what's going on. No matter what you're doing. Um, but... Uh, at least we don't have to worry about that in this particular scenario here. Ikatosh has fallen off the back of the second Hyundai, which is now driven off into the distance up in fourth position. And you can see we're going down the inside through Parabolica. As long as we can keep this nice and tight before the apex, we're going to be able to uh, fight off any cutback attempts and get a nice run up the straight there, which we so do there. So the Hyundai is now firmly in my slipstream. We're moving over to the right-hand side to defend. This is how you defend on the straight here. If they're too close to get a slingshot, back them up. Back them up in the previous corner so they're right on your tail. They won't be able to get that slipstream slingshot 
and you can see he's pulled out of the slipstream to go for the move, have a look down on that radar, and he's just falling backwards. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. So you exit the slipstream, and then you're hit with all that air rushing over your car that was previously being pushed out of the way once when you're in slipstream, and that you're now fighting that air, the car doesn't accelerate as quick, and if your car doesn't have the horsepower, if your car doesn't have the grunt to be able to kind of maintain that on its own, you're gonna lose out as soon as you pull out. So that's what we're gonna do. That's the main way to defend, especially, you know, that especially works in this particular race as kind of around us on the circuit, there's a lot of cars that aren't as great in a straight line compared to this Supra. I mean, the Supra is quite strong in a straight line, so I think that's what actually does it. It's not so much the other cars are slow, it's that the Supra is quite quick. You can see it actually almost gets the job done on that particular occasion there, but the corner just comes up soon enough for me to be able to defend that position and as long as we can get the braking for the second chicane correct uh, that's going to be a successful defense get through here nicely that was actually a very tidy rendition of that chicane there and that is a quite successful defensive technique there you can see coming onto lap or finishing lap six coming on to lap seven uh, a similar story to the previous lap we're going to have a go and have a look and see how we defend this over the right hand side as usual Hyundai picks up a little bit of a toe off the exit of Parabolica, but once he gets to the back of me, pulls over to the left, he runs out of steam, and you can see I'm now gaining on him as the Supra climbs into the mid to 70 k's an hour region. Coming into Curva Grande, get on that curb on the inside so it pulls the car around the corner and helps keep your minimum apex speed up. As long as you get the braking correct now. So once again, ticking all the boxes, beautiful cut, hop over the curb, on the power cleanly, not too much oversteer. Beautiful, beautiful work there. Once again, round three, let's go. Ikatosh, let's see what you got, bring it on, buddy. Once again, over on the right hand side, Ikatosh into that slipstream, he's trying something different this time, you can see he's holding off the move. Uh, perhaps he's waiting for me to move left, so he can then launch up the right, which would therefore be the inside and the, and the, sh and the uh, shorter route through turn one, but he uh, unfortunately feathers too much and falls off too much before Parabon uh, before Curva Grande, my apologies. Heading into Ascari now, we're gonna uh, focus our attention on the pack ahead, as all the while myself and Ikatosh, or I've been defending from Ikatosh there, uh, the Conzio has been catching up to the back of the Porsche driven by Pal, who's also gone for a second race here in the second slot. And you can see he makes the move up the inside of Parabolica. Uh, that loses them time. That crucially loses them time. And they were about one and a half seconds up in the distance there. And they are now very, very close to me here. You can see I've caught way up. I'm now up in fourth. I accidentally cut out the part of the race where Metal Gear uh, went into the pits. You can see we go up the inside. Concio breaks really early for that Ascari and that's kind of what threw me off. Uh, I broke where I felt was appropriate and I ended up going deep by accident. Ikatosh muscles his way through, gets himself a three second penalty, probably uh, that definitely wasn't his fault. I think a bit of a miscommunication between myself and Concio uh, left myself offline and therefore kind of in the way uh, for, uh, for Ascari and unfortunately that just let uh, I Ikatosh through, uh, unfortunately a little bit of contact resulted in a three second penalty for him, quite uh, unfair if you ask me, uh, but you know, the penalty itself wasn't exactly anyone's fault, that was the game's fault for penalising stupid contact, it doesn't really mean anything, Ikatosh did nothing wrong, I made a mistake, but I didn't block anyone, so I don't know, a bit of a dodgy penalty system going on here. But we're now going to rejoin the race in lap 13, we're in 4th, and we're just getting faint dregs of slipstream off the back of the Porsche, and you can see as we head up towards the braking zone for the second chicane, we are now firmly in that slipstream of the Porsche there, uh, but we unfortunately go slightly deep uh, into that uh, first chicane. I, I, <laughs> I've probably said second and first chicane the same number of times. Uh, it's the second chicane at Monza, but the first chicane of this layout. Uh, and you can see we've dropped out of the slipstream of the Porsche again. So we're just yo-yoing into this, you know, back and forth, in and out of the slipstream. Uh, but here's where it counts, a straight portion of the track here. And we manage to just get ourselves back into the slipstream of the Porsche. 
So, the Porsche is another car that's on the list of not as good as the Supra in the straight line. So even if we are slightly out of the slipstream by like a tenth or under, the Supra has enough sort of a, of a power advantage against these other car to crawl its way on its own, under its own power, back into the slipstream of the, of the car ahead. And then the slipstream will take over and pull uh, the car even further towards the uh, player ahead. That's happened on the straight down to Parabolica and on the exit of Parabolica, we're definitely in the slipstream of the Porsche now. Have a look at the gap, we're half a second behind exiting Parabolica and you can see as we head up the main straight, we're about halfway down now, it's down to two tenths, pulling up to the inside. That is a beautiful move up the inside, down the straight, a beautiful slipstream slingshot move up the straight, we've got the inside for Curva Grande, absolutely beautiful move there. Uh, so we're now we're going to focus our attention on the Contio up ahead. I think we're faster than him at this point. I don't know how good that Hyundai is on tyres. Uh, the Supra is not so great, but the car feels alright at this point. Here, so as long as we can keep the car in check, we could be on for a second position here. Uh, Rid1 F1 up in the lead has driven an absolutely beautiful race. And uh, there's going to be no chance, no real chance of catching him unless he makes a horrific error which I doubt he's going to do. He's a very consistent driver, and he's obviously very very quick being able to hold the lead off uh, the rest of the pack. So having a look behind, Porsche is in my slipstream, and I'm about two and a half tenths away from the slipstream of the Contio, so I now have a little bit of a dilemma on my hands. Uh, Porsche behind is three tenths. That's probably going to be close enough if this was the main straight for him to get up the inside of Curva Grande. I have to make the decision of whether I back him up through Parabolica, that'll lose my chance of second or go for second. I decided let's be conservative at this point, let's back up the Porsche heading through Parabolica, I've overslow in the apex and I've lost myself a tenth against Pal uh, behind, but that means it's going to be too close in order to get a good slingshot. I'm f all the way over on the right hand side, the Conzio is 1.2 seconds up ahead, now I don't think I'm going to be able to get second. But if I can defend this third position, that's going to be a podium in this race, which is exactly where I qualified. But considering I was down in eighth at one point, that uh, wouldn't be a bad result at all. And then as we head through Curva Grande, I try to keep it tight there. The Porsche had an opportunity. I just opened up the inside into the braking zone for the first chicane now. On the 150 meter board, I meet that apex beautifully. The Porsche was closing ever so slightly under braking as we headed into that second chicane there. Uh, but the corner came came up just soon enough for me to turn in uh, no contact but I just came across the front of the Porsche in order to stop him from going through there absolutely beautiful defense if I do say so myself and I will say Powell has been an absolute pleasure to race against so thank you very much for that but as we head on the exit of Lesmo down the Seraglio straight the Porsche's fallen behind a little bit it's probably looking to be a third position a podium is not too bad the Concio has just lost himself a little bit of time, but I think by this stage of the race, you're looking to just consolidate what you got rather than trying to continue to make moves. The last thing you want to do is go for a move, make a mistake, get someone a penalty, get yourself a penalty or bin it and lose 10 positions. Uh, whereas if you were just patient and grateful for what you had, you could have stayed in a position like third. As we round out Parabolica, it's going to be a third position, a nice podium po paying position for this first, or it's actually the second round, of the exhibition series here at Monza. Seven seconds off the lead, uh, Rid1 putting in a total race time of 25 minutes, uh, 0.7. Uh, in my practice race, I did in a lobby before the first slot, I did a 25 minutes, 0.2. So I definitely had the pace in me to be a race winner here in this slot, but didn't quite come off uh, after the poor start that I had. But there we go, podium position, 249 points. That's quite a strong result uh, for me. Uh, definitely up there in uh, one of my personal bests for an FIA race, so that's absolutely lovely. Uh, but I do hope you enjoyed that one. A little note as well, the time slots for these uh, FIA races in this series, Nations Cup and Manufacturers Cup, are pretty crap for me. Uh, I can hardly compete. I can't race at all on a Saturday, uh, which is where the Nation Cup races are for the first half of the calendar. And then the manufacturers are on uh, Wednesday for the first half of the calendar. They swap days 
after we get past the halfway point of each calendar, uh, so I'm not going to be able to compete in the second half of manufacturers at all. The only chance I have to compete in any of these races is on a Wednesday, but there's three slots. The first slot is at like 7 o'clock at night. You know, that's way too late. They used to be like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Where did that go? That's what I love doing, because, you know, I wake up, have some breakfast, you know, just chill out for a while, have some lunch, uh, and then after lunch I'll jump on to play a game. And then, you know, if the race is at 3, I have lunch at midday, I have a couple of hours practice before the first race, and then I've even got a second or a third attempt before it gets too late into the evening. You know, at 7 o'clock I'm having a shower and eating dinner, I'm not racing, so I either have to get that done way earlier, which isn't ideal. But if I really am attracted to a combination, I'll make that effort and go for it. But uh, as for my natural, as for the natural course of my day, it doesn't include a 7 p.m. race. And then obviously the two slots after 7 o'clock just get later and later. It's really not ideal. So I don't expect to see too much FIA, unfortunately. There's not really much I can do about it, so I'm just going to have to live with it. But yeah, just a quick note for that. Probably going to lose my S rank because of that. If I don't compete and get enough points, I'm not going to meet the criteria to keep my S rated DR, which is unfortunate. Uh, but we'll stray aside from that. I had an absolutely cracking race there at Monza, and I quite enjoyed that, actually. Uh, which is unusual. I usually hate races at Monza because it's too much slipstream involved. But that was about as good as of a race you're going to get at Monza, and I'm very glad to be a part of it. Uh, do hit that like button if you enjoyed, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Uh, do leave a comment as well, questions, comments, constructive criticism, as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.